Don, a fine-tuned universe is one of those probes that immediately elicits passion from almost anyone who understands what the term means. I want to ask you, as a physicist and as a believer, how do you look upon the fine-tuning of the universe? First question, do you think the universe is fine-tuned? Some people disagree. Well, I certainly think that what we can observe about the universe, a part of the universe that we can observe, does have some remarkable fine tunings. I mean, that we, we do see that, that some of the constants could not be much different and, and for us to be here. I mean, one of the most remarkable ones is the so-called cosmological constant that, that, right, right. that governs how fast the universe is accelerating is, is very small. It's about 120 orders of magnitude smaller <laughs> than, than you might have naively expected. So like, like a decimal point and 120 or maybe 122 zeros and, a, and then a one. And to be that close to zero, everything, all sorts of things canceling out and not being zero is, you know, cries out for explanation, obviously. Right. So, yes, it, 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 cries, out, it cries out for, for, for explanation. And there, there are a number of, I mean, number of tentative explanations. One of them that it's just a pure fluke, that it's, it's, it's just chance. Another one is that it was chosen that these constants were chosen by God to permit life in our world, and another one is that there is a multiverse of many different possible values for these, and that the range includes values that do permit life to exist. So certainly, the uh, the fluke or the brute fact, uh, you know, would be shocking because it would be a brute fact. To be a brute fact by itself is okay, but a brute fact that that results in our life and and sentient life emerging in our consciousness today. I mean, that just seems like a brute fact too far. Yes, I think the brute fact uh, interpretation is, you know, I, I think not many people would believe that. They would, they would want to have some explanation. Some people might think, well, it just comes out of the mathematics somehow. But it, even then, it might seem to be like a brute fact about the mathematics, although there can be, of course. Right. What's in mathematics is just logically determined. So it, it, if you understand it, then you're no longer... A surprise, but it, but it would be it would seem to be surprising if if that were the explanation for it because it's so remarkable, a, a, a coincidence. Okay, so you've got two left. If we eliminate that, you have multiple worlds where you have different selections uh, within the the range that we find, or you have a a fine tuner of some kind, it, you know, God, or it, you know, it could be it could be a simulation and. You know, somebody else can be doing the fine tuning. Uh, can you distinguish between those, or it just becomes a matter of, uh, of faith or science? Well, I think you can. I mean, you can have either one of them, or you can have a, a combination. Now, I, I do take in some sense a combination, but I think that God structured the laws, the basic laws, maybe not including the constants, but the the basic laws in such a in, in such a form that it does produce a multiverse, such that they. In the different parts, you do have sort of local laws that do have constants, and some of them do have constants that are pertaining to life. So I do believe that there's enormous design to the universe and the laws, but to my mind, I think a more, the most elegant way God might have designed the laws is such that he didn't have to separately fix the constants, that they come out, a range of constants in different parts of the multiverse come out from these laws he's, he's ordained, and then life comes out in one of these. But it's not automatic that even if you do have a multiverse, that one of them will necessarily have life. I mean, just like you can have, well, it's just like you can have an, an, an infinite line that does not go through some region of space. I could have a line here and it doesn't go through my hand, and even though the line's infinite, you could have an infinite number of universes without any of them having life. Right, sure. So I think God, had to, God did make choices so that life could exist, but I, I, I personally think that he made the choice an elegant choice of fixing the form of the laws, but not fixing the, the, the individual constants, and that different parts of the universe have different effective constants, and then some of them are suitable for life as God wanted it. But if you admit that there are multiple universes, and in different universes can have different constants of physics, like right. the cosmological constant, that really um, undermines many of the arguments for God, because in the, the argument as you presented it, I could take God out of that picture and just have the laws of physics generating all these different possibilities, and then one is the one in which we find ourselves. Well, it, it does remove one, it, one argument for design, although that's a fairly recent argument, because of course it's only been the last few decades yeah. that we've known about this fine-tuning. But it, it, it's true that many theists have picked up on this, this problem of the fine-tuning and say, aha, this is a problem that, you know, that God solves. 
And I guess I'm taking- And multiple universes undermine that. You don't- So I think, right, in, in, in a sense, it's a, little bit, it's a little bit analogous to the way that many people view that Darwinian evolution undermined a particular yeah. form right. of design of individual, individual right. biological creatures. Right. See, I think God designed the whole process and, and the whole process you know, did lead to us as well as as well as other beings, and maybe the other multiverses. It, it would it would lead to other creatures that are somewhat like us, but but different. So I don't believe that Darwinian evolution undermines design as a whole. It undermined a particular design argument, and I think the multiverse might undermine a particular design argument that God chose these particular designs. But it doesn't undermine the overall design argument, and, and it certainly doesn't undermine the existence of God. It just undermines one one small argument for God. 